How quickly can your company accelerate? Are you continually delivering results in your highest priority business outcomes? Dan Coglin, Accelerate Your Business. My speaking style is very much a teaching style. I try to pe give people very practical ideas that they can use right away, the very next day at their work. We're focused on real business situations with very practical advice. We practice it right there in the room during the presentation. Accelerator action, number six, on page four, schedule thinking time. Tom was the vice president of operations of about a $600 million business unit. I was working with Tom as an executive coach. We got along very, very well, and one day he said to me, Dan, I have a problem. I said, Tom, what is it? He said, my boss thinks that I'm not very strategic. I'm not very creative. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, oh, Tom, it's okay. I have seen this situation many, many times in the past. Here is what I suggest you do. Tom picked up a pen and he said, this is gonna be important. I wanna write this down. I said, Tom, here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you pull out your weekly calendar and you schedule one hour a week to think. One hour a week where you get away from your boss, you get away from your employees, you get away from your customers and your suppliers, you get away from your family and your dog, and you go somewhere where nobody knows you. You take out the blank sheet of paper and at the top of the sheet of paper, you write down one business outcome that you want to improve or one business issue that you want to resolve. Turn it into an open-ended question. Answer the question from a variety of perspectives for 35 minutes. Could be from your boss's perspective, from your employee's perspective, from your perspective, from your competitor's perspective, from your customer's perspective. Come up with as many ideas as you can for 35 minutes. Take the next 10 minutes to look at all of the ideas that you wrote down, combine ideas together to make even better ideas, and then Take the last 15 minutes, select your best idea, develop an action plan, and then move into action. Tom looked at me, he put his pen down, and he said to me, Dan, that is the dumbest idea that I have ever heard. He said, if I go off to La La Land to think, people are going to make fun of me. He said, you don't understand. People don't pay me to sit around and think. People pay me to get things done. I said, Tom, I do understand. People don't pay you to get things done. They pay you to improve results. If you'll take one hour a week to set aside to think about a specific outcome or issue, I believe you will enhance the quality of all the other hours in your work week. Three weeks later, I saw Tom again, and I said, Tom, how's it going? He said, um, well, I just want to let you know, Dan, I tried your thinking idea, and I wasted three hours that I could have been getting things done. I said, Tom, hang in there. About two more months went by, and Tom said, you know, I came across an idea that we've never used before in operations, and uh, I don't know if we should do it or not. I said, do you think it might have an impact on your profitable growth, on your business outcomes? He said, it might. I said, try it. About five more months went by, and I saw Tom again, and I said, Tom, how's it going? He said, it's going great. I just want to let you know that uh, I now schedule an hour a week to think, and everybody on my team schedules an hour a week to think. He said, I just have one problem. I said, what is it? He said, why didn't you tell me to do this when we first met? I did not have a very good answer. So I don't want to make that mistake twice. I encourage all of you to schedule on your weekly calendar one hour a week to think, to get away from everyone else, to go somewhere where nobody knows you, to take out a blank sheet of paper and at the top of the sheet of paper write down one business outcome or one business issue that you want to resolve and then turn it into an open-ended question for 35 minutes answer that question from a variety of perspectives at the end of 35 minutes look at all your ideas combine ideas together to make an even better idea take your best idea and take the last 15 minutes to develop an action plan I believe if you'll do that you can have a tremendous impact not only on the customer experience, but on other business results. Steve was a results-driven executive. And the reason I know Steve was a results-driven executive is because the very first time I met him, he said to me, Dan, I am a results-driven executive. And I said, well, that's good because the job of an executive is to make decisions, whether you're the business owner or you work inside an organization, to make decisions 
that improves results over a sustainable period of time. Steve then told me four more times over the next 45 minutes that he was a results-driven executive. And so I said to him, Steve, what do you mean by a results-driven executive? He said, well, at the beginning of every quarter, we set a goal. And if we achieve the goal or exceed the goal, we have a celebration. And if we don't achieve the goal, then I come down pretty hard on people. Sometimes I lay people off just to get the point across. I said, Steve, how much money are you leaving on the table using that approach? He said, I'm not leaving any money on the table. What are you talking about? I said, Steve, how much time and energy are your folks wasting worrying about the results that they could be doing using to actually improve the results? He said, well, I have heard it's pretty hard to work for me, but hey, that's business. I said, Steve, you're only answering two questions. There's five more questions to answer. He said, what are you talking about? I said, all you're answering is, what was the goal? What did we actually achieve? But there's five more questions. What was the goal? What did we actually achieve? What did we do to try to achieve the goal? What worked well and why did it work well? What did not work well and why did it not work well? What lessons did we learn or relearn? And what are we going to do the same and what are we going to do differently going forward? Steve said, Dan, I don't want to drive my business looking in the rearview mirror all the time. I said, I don't want you to look in the rearview mirror all the time either. But if you never pause, to look at what's working and what's not working, you're doing the same thing over and over again. Over the next three years, Steve still came down hard on folks when they didn't achieve the goals, and he still celebrated when they did achieve the goals. But every month for the next three years, he pulled together his top six or seven folks, and he asked them to go through the bar raising process. They went through all seven questions, shared their ideas, found ways to improve it, and over those three years, they steadily improved their business results in an industry that was up and down. What I encourage you folks to do is to pause once a month, pull out the bar raising process, and simply go through the questions. There's nothing fancy or complicated about them. If I asked you to write down seven questions, you probably would have come up with the same seven. The challenge isn't coming up the questions. The challenge is getting to use them. When I get on a treadmill... I feel better the next day. The challenge is getting on that treadmill. I encourage you folks to use the bar raising process once a month. My daughter, Sarah, is nine years old. For her ninth birthday, what she wanted was a sleepover at our house. She invited five nine-year-old girls to our house. We made pizzas, we played games, and we finally got the girls down to sleep at 11 p.m. The girls were in sleeping bags down on our family room floor. All the girls were in a circle. So all six sleeping bags were with the heads in the middle. My wife, Barbara, and I went upstairs to go to bed. 25 minutes later, Sarah came running upstairs. She said to us, Mom, Dad, we hear keys rattling downstairs, and we don't know where the noise is coming from. We ran downstairs. We checked the windows. We checked the doors. We checked underneath the carpets. We could not find a burglar. And then we finally realized what was making the noise. It was the zippers on the sleeping bags. And the more nervous the girls got, the louder the zippers got. And the louder the zippers got, the more nervous the girls got. The same thing is happening right now in our economy. There's, if I don't have it today, uh, today's not a good example, but yesterday, Friday, I did have it. Almost every single day on the cover of the USA Today, there's more and more and more bad news. And so what happens is people read the bad news and they, they stop investing in their businesses, they stop trying, and it becomes more bad news and more bad news. I'm encouraging you folks to stay logical in the midst of all this craziness that's going on. If there's something that you feel that you should invest in to improve your business, invest in it. If you think it's not a good time to invest, then don't. But stay logical. Don't let the media dictate your business to you.